Hey, what's going on guys? This video, I want to talk a little bit more about the default constructor. Pramp is a free mock interview platform where you can develop your technical interviewing skills. Practice coding with live execution of all major programming languages to solve real interview questions. Interview types include data structures and algorithms, product management, behavioral interviews, system design, front end, and data science. I've personally used this service to successfully crash course for a software engineering interview. Lots of people are having success getting positions at companies like Amazon, Google, Twitter, and more. Check it out, I'll leave a link for you guys in the description. So when do we use the default constructor? Well, we've actually been using it a lot through this series. So here's an example. When we say new and then a class name followed by empty parentheses, this is the default constructor and it's made automatically for us. So looking at the student class, inside of here, we don't see anything about a constructor, but if we wanted to manually write it out, it'd probably look like this. We would say public student and it needs to match the name. So student, student, and then parentheses, and then the curly braces. So it looks almost exactly like a method. It really is a method, but the only difference is that it has no return type. So no void, no string, no nothing. And it has to match the class name. What we can do is we can override this to do something custom. So for example, we can do an output and say creating a student. Now when we run this, you can see it says creating a student because this constructor is hit when we say new student. So that is how the default constructor works. Typically the default constructor will be used for classes that when you instantiate it, you don't need to give it any upfront information. It's pretty much in a good state as soon as you create it. But in the situation of a student, we might need to be very clear upfront that the student's name is this and the major is this or whatever it might be in order for it to be a valid student. For example, you're not gonna have a student walking around with no first name or last name. So it would be appropriate if we could go in here and pass in the first name like so, and also pass in the last name. And you could also do the major, but you know, maybe they're undecided. So I don't really think that's a necessity. So what we could do is do this, but you can see it's not happy. Why is it not happy? Well, that's because if you look at our student class, this constructor does not have any parameters. So what we're gonna be doing in the next video is we're gonna be talking about how to create custom constructors and some gotchas you need to know. So stay tuned.